You always prepare yourself because you know that it could happen any time, but you never know when. And when it does, you realize you could never be prepared enough. My history with kidney disease really started when I was eight months old. I was diagnosed with a kidney infection, quite a severe one, but unfortunately it wasn't given an antibiotic. And so my kidneys failed when I was 26 years old. When I was 31, I had my first transplant. It was a perfect match and lasted 23 and a half years. Essentially, my life went back to normal. Things were much better. After the first transplant, we were able to go away and do things. We could visit Gail's family. And over time, we started canoeing up in the far north as a substitute for going to exotic locales. Life became much, much better. It was like a miracle. Just to have someone who was healthy was remarkable. When I found out that the first transplant was failing and that I was facing dialysis again, I was devastated. I was always prepared, I thought, for that moment because nothing lasts forever. But it was horrible to think of what it was going to be like to go back on dialysis. It was not something that was easy to handle. Being on dialysis consumes your life. I'm a gardener, and normally when I garden, I go out early in the morning and I'm there all day. And when I was on dialysis the second time, a half hour was all I had, and I'd be on the couch all day. That is your life. It becomes your life. Here's my wife who's just, it was just like, they took her life right away. Unfortunately, Gail's story is all too familiar. Often a relatively young person doing and feeling quite well is found to have severe kidney failure, which has a significant impact on their lives. If we compare transplantation and dialysis in terms of quality of life, in terms of ability to re-enter society to work full time, and in terms of expected survival, transplantation offers superior outcomes in all of those respects. After being back on dialysis, people started offering me kidneys. They weren't all suitable candidates, but when my sister-in-law, Kathy, offered me her kidney and it was a match, I got pretty excited about getting my life back again for the second time. Every day, we get closer to a world where transplants are easier, safer, and more likely to succeed. When I first started working with kidney transplant patients in the 70s, the success rate at one year was 50%. Now it's close to 95%. With thousands of patients like Gail waiting with their lives on hold, we cannot work fast enough to make this dream a reality. But it's not just transplants that save lives. As physician-in-chief, head of medicine at University Health Network, I cannot stress enough that there is a strong need for support throughout many of our program areas, which treat a range of important and complex medical conditions. When you give to Toronto General and Western Hospital Foundation, you give people hope by funding some of the most innovative research in the world. You keep families together by helping to ensure life-saving treatments and surgeries are possible. And you inspire our patients with the courage to keep fighting by helping to fund the most advanced medical equipment. I'm very happy to be able to help the foundation because I'm aware of the impact of how it changes lives. When a life is on the line, every dollar matters. That's why I'm urging you to join me in supporting Toronto General and Western Hospital Foundation by making a $1,000 gift today. Your donation will keep us at the forefront of life-saving research, world-class patient care, and help us to acquire the most advanced medical equipment, like the kind that gave Gail her life back. There are cliche words around things like transplantation, and one of them is the gift of life, and it is truly that. It's a gift you can never repay. No, that's for sure. Never.